Are they hungry enough, the boys, to to keep this chance of the title going, do you think? Yeah, well, look, we were disappointed last game. We were disappointed in ourselves, so we've had a good week to uh, reflect and get it right on the training court. Our training's been sharp and we're ready to go. What about the hunger, though? Like, you've already won two titles, you're chasing a third. Sometimes, you know, maybe Three. players aren't as hungry as, uh, as what, you know, they could be. Oh, look, that's what we train for every day, is to win a championship, you know. It's all about rings and relationships in, in professional sports, especially for basketball. So, you know, that desire has got to come within. If it's not there, you, it's time to hang up the boots. And, um, you know, we've got to do a much better job of, of playing. And I thought we weren't as aggressive as we should be during the game. We've got to be careful. Adelaide uh, really overemphasised contact and the referees are calling it, you know, we can't let them, at one stage it was 23 foul shots to eight. So we've got to do a much better job uh, being aggressive and if the refs are calling it and playing smart with, uh, with uh, um, contact. For the past decade, the Wildcats have always been called physical. Is that just a ploy by teams to try and, you know, to get the refs to call more fouls or determine how the game pans out, do you think? Is yeah, normally the refs in the finals, you know, let the contact go a little bit further. So I was a little bit surprised in game one with, they do a really good job of uh, accentuating the contact. So we've got to be smarter with that and don't put them to the foul line as often. And, and we've got to do it down the other end. What impact did the contact? Does that mean they're playing up a bit, do you think? Well, no, just, they're, it or? They're, they're masters at it. They lead the league in foul shooting. They're, I think they've had 200 more foul shots than any other team in the league through the regular season. And again, it was pretty lopsided in game one. So uh, we, we've got to be careful how we play that. And if the refs are calling, we've got to be smarter. So how do you do that? Because all season you guys have been physical and, and within the rules. But how do you taper that back now? Well, we can take a leaf out of their book and start overemphasising the contact as well. Mm. What did it do to you last week when the foul count started going up on your big blokes, especially like at, at Grant, I think had four pretty early and Cook and Yeah, and, and Lucas was in foul trouble, Jesse was in foul trouble. Yeah, so it puts a little bit of pressure on there, but um, you know, the other area too is, is making sure we get the ball first. You know, we've got to get the ball first. They out rebounded us pretty easy and that's that's an area that we've prided ourselves on and something that we've got to get back to doing on our home court. And getting yourselves into a position to get foul while you're shooting, like driving a bit harder, there was a lot of just jump shots being taken. Yeah, it's a lot easier to get fouls called when you've got the ball in the hand than, than against you. So yeah, we've got to do a better job of getting the ball. How do you fire up JP Tokoto? He had uh, just the five points last weekend and he's a pretty important player, you would think, tomorrow night. Yeah, I think JP was pretty disappointed in his own performance. You know, when we went back through the review and he's just his work rate and his engagement on the court. and. He has a rare ability to bring everybody's level up when he plays strong and he's been a big part of us all season and we need him firing and we need him rebounding, defending and um, he has a great basketball IQ and uh, we, we're going to need him Friday night. Was that his sort of first taste of finals basketball? It was for the Wildcats but mm. over the years do you think and maybe that's just something he needs to get used to? Yeah, look, uh, not, not really sure. It was just a, a one-off bad game for him. So I'm sure that he's going to respond pretty well on, on Friday night. We have uh, faith in him and trust in him. And um, we know what he can do on the court. He makes us uh, from a good team to a great team. And, um, you know, he, he's a big part of why we're going to win on Friday night. I think the starting five, correct me if I'm wrong, scored 94 points mm. out of their total. Mm. <laughs> that must be a major concern for you. Is your starting five obviously need to be a lot tougher on them. Yeah, I think that uh, they started every quarter, they got off to a good start. So we've got to be mindful of matching that intensity. We don't want to be down 10 to two. And, and then in the third quarter, I think they went like it was 15 to four run. So, uh, and put the game really out of balance. So it's, uh, it's a big responsibility for our starters, make sure we're, we're starting well and our bench to support that. So hopefully we start better than we have done. How do you slow them down uh, playing at a massive pace? I think we did a good job. We was just given the second chance points, rebounding, foul line. You know, they score 30 points from the foul line and um, we've got to do a much better job of that. And they're quick and they're explosive and so are we. You know, we scored last time here in Perth, we scored 111 points on them. So um, we can run, we just got to get the ball. Have you shown them that game, that, uh, that 20 point result game this week at all? Oh, not this week. No, we've, we've talked about it before and yeah. Um, Zone-wise, uh, 
during the broadcast, the commentators are commenting that they're surprised you weren't playing a little bit more zone. Uh, how did you feel it pan out? Did you think you were happy that you could take them on with a bit more press? I think, uh, you know, tactically, it's probably around 10% of the job. 90% of the job is your effort and your intensity and, and following through the game plan. That's, that's been our motto since we've been here, and we got away from playing that level and intense level. And if we play the intense level, it doesn't matter if we play man or zone or full court press, it's, we have the ability to crush teams. And, but when we sit back and just kind of play passive, we're, we're not that good. There's a lot of Wildcats fans who were really worried after watching game one. What about from you as a coach after a defeat of that size? What goes through your mind? Well, the, what goes through the mind is that it's 0-1. It doesn't matter if it's one point or 50 points, it's yeah. playoff basketball and Adelaide did what they're supposed to do is win on their home court and now it's game two and that's the beautiful thing about having series, a three game series, five game series that you can make adjustments and uh, you get one back on your home court. We know sport is very much a confidence game as well. How do you go about making sure that the confidence wasn't too dented? Yeah, no, it's not, uh, not so much a confidence. We have the belief in us. It was just disappointment that we let ourselves down. So the confidence is always there and um, we just got to make sure we play at that level. What was the feedback from the players? For what? Just in terms of why it went down like that. Oh, it was just, uh, you know, like I said, they were disappointed in their performance. They're not really sure why it was that, but we were standing around watching a lot of stuff and sort of participating. You said that you only pay, play like the first half of the, the game and you need to play the whole 40 minutes. So yeah, well, this, you know, the half time, I think 30 seconds before the half is a one possession game. You know, we turned the ball over the last play. They hit a three at half time, six points. And, um, you know, we really, uh, the old come out of the locker room at half time, that didn't really eventuate for us. Maybe we should have stayed in the locker room. <laughs> yeah, have you got a message for the fans, Trev? Because... Uh, they can actually have an influence on this game, can't they, with 13,000 people? Yeah, just stay the faith. We know what, uh, what we've done in the playoffs. We need that support at home. And it's an intimidating arena and the playoffs is nothing better. And uh, we look to get uh, Friday night and build on it from there. Cheers. Thanks, Thank guys. You.